What's up guys, Ben here, Tactical Nutrition, and I wanna talk about a fairly common topic today, but one that still seems to be elusive to many people out there that are trying to get to, into their best shape physically, mentally, and spiritually, and that is how much protein do you need, right? Any t anyone that starts a fitness program of any sort um, inevitably runs into this question. What do I need to eat? How much protein do I need? And there's a million different answers because there's so many different things that'll work for so many different people. I brought some notes for this one because just a little bit of science in the background, stuff that I learned back in school. It's not super important, but it is important to have, I think, to cut through the meathead bro science kind of BS at times and get a little bit behind the scenes with the actual science and just a little bit of... Um, Biology, you could say. Human Phys, right? My favorite class in college, the hardest class in our major. Anyway, how much protein do you need? So what I want to say first is, if so if you're really new here, if you're really new to working out and you just don't know much about this at all, especially if you're like you're super young and you're just getting into working out. I remember when I was 17 and I thought I was, it was awesome. I would go to the gym and then I would, I would just pound an entire giant thing of Gatorade and eat like pasta and wonder why I didn't get any gains. So here's what I want people to understand first. What is protein? Sounds simple enough, right? When people hear protein, they think of what you're eating, right? Like I need to get some protein. This food has protein. But here's the thing. Your whole body is made out of proteins, right? There's different types of proteins. Proteins are enzymes. Proteins are what keep your cells structurally integral, meaning like foundations and physical proteins inside of your cells and throughout your body that are keeping your body strong physically. And I don't just mean muscular, I mean at a microscopic cellular level. So there are different types of proteins and there are left-handed and right-handed proteins, believe it or not. So if you ever wonder why it says L-carnitine or L-arginine or L-ornithine on your energy drink or whatever it is you're drinking, uh, that's what that L means is left-handed because that's all humans can absorb. That's a whole nother matter. Anyway, so, okay. So we have protein and what pro protein breaks down, there's different uh, terms here and different products out there and different strategies. Protein is kind of like the, as a term, is kind of like the final product, right? Protein breaks down into peptides, so peptides are something that are actually becoming very common with like longevity and even like stem cells and things like that. And like people are injecting peptides into their joints and things like that. And I'm not here to talk about that, but just know that protein breaks down into peptides, which are essentially chains of amino acids. So amino acids are kind of like the smallest amount of a protein. Um, and we'll talk about essential amino acids and things like that in this video. Um, but so amino acids, you might be familiar with like a popular supplement is BCAAs, branch chain amino acids. And the reason that that's kind of important is because the smaller something is, like it's almost like the more it's been broken down. The protein has been broken into the peptide, which has been broken down into the amino acid. It's going to make it easier to absorb. That's one reason why BCAAs are so, you know, that in theory, that's why they're good. It's because they're very easy to absorb. You don't have to break them down because they're already broken down for you. So you take your BCA supplement either before or during or after your workout. I like to take mine before and during more than anything um, so that you're actually getting your amino acids, which there are many types of amino acids, by the way. Um, into your body. So that's what the protein, peptides, amino acids. Okay. Okay. What, what's next on the list here? Okay. So talking about, again, one thing off of like the structural proteins I was talking about, that becomes important because of the different types of training out there. And a lot of people I've noticed, especially young dudes, I seen it, seen it this morning. Um, they get excited, they get into the gym, they start doing the isolation workouts. I've talked about this in so many videos. And any strength coach will tell you, you should start out with compound movements, deadlifts, squats, presses, pull-ups, 
multiple joint movements. One of the reasons for this, especially like deadlifts and squats, is that it physically creates muscle in your body that will resist the test of time. <laughs> Meaning that it's not pump muscle, right? Anyone can go into the gym, get a pump, blood flowing to the muscle, it looks bigger, great, you know, take your Instagram picture, and then you go home and an uh, hour and a half later, it's gone. And then you just repeat this over and over and over, never actually getting bigger over time, right? You just, you just accumulate this pump. When you do this kind of strength training that like literally like strengthens your bones and your joints and the connective tissue, that's that structural protein I'm talking about. And what will happen is over time, I noticed that this with myself is you, you do a lot of strength training, you gain a lot of weight, and then um, something happens in your life. There's an accident. In my case, I actually had a broken jaw and I lost about 30 pounds, which sucks when you're trying to gain weight, right? And so finally I, you know, recovered from that, but I was able to add the weight back on so much quicker. It wasn't like I had to start over from scratch. And I think, I feel like the, the reason for that, this is just my idea. This is just my theory. I feel like the reason for that is because I, w I had built up a lot of that dense protein inside the body and like the, also the muscle memory, like my body was accustomed to being at a certain weight anyway. So what it does is it increases like your, these are the things that increase your, 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 uh, your bone density and your joint strength and your, and your connective tissue. But that's all I'm saying about it's, it's, it's not the same type of protein that we're talking about in terms of exogenous protein, which is what you eat. Okay, the next uh, thing on my list here is, and I will talk about the numbers here, but that's, it's important to know why you're doing things in my book. The more you know about why you're doing things, the more it makes sense, and then you can start to make intuitive decisions. So what happens is your blood levels, okay? You have blood levels of glucose, you've got blood levels of lipids, which is fats, and then you've got blood fatty acids, and then you've got blood levels of amino acids. These things are floating around, and the reason is because your body's sending them from tissue to tissue, right? It makes sense, it's like a city. It's a city that where there's commerce and there's industry and it's like, it's got to go from point A to point B through your blood. And so basically your body is always keeping a consistent, trying to keep a consistent um, amount of like blood sugar and fatty acids and protein. So, and this is where it gets a little hazy with all the new diets out there. What I'm saying is one of the reasons I preach to my clients about keeping your protein intake consistent is that what will happen is your body will constantly have this idea that there's a set level of pro of uh, amino acids floating in your blood. And what that does is sends different signals. And I'm not even going to get into half of that. I don't even know most of that. I don't think anyone really knows a lot, of that. <laughs> but your body has a tendency to like, know. okay, well, since the blood amino acid levels are staying constant, this means we have a consistent amount of protein. And what's that gonna tell your body not to do? It's not gonna break down muscle. It doesn't need to break down muscle because the, the reason half the time your body breaks down muscle is to get those amino acids into your blood. So if the blood amino acid levels are consistently stable, they don't have to be super high and they won't get too high anyway, is so that your body won't break down muscle. Right? So this is important, but there's people that fast and there's been all types of things and there's, that's just my idea there. But for the average person, you want to keep your protein intake consistent. That means if you, if you're a young dude, especially trying to add muscle and you go all day without eating and then you work out and then you think you can have 150 grams of protein in one meal and it's going to be the same thing as having like 50 grams of protein in three meals throughout the day. You're sadly mistaken. That's not how it's going to work. You need to stay consistent. You need to have meals and snacks and meals and snacks, like very consistent if you can. Okay, so let's just get down to the numbers at, at, and finally to end the video. But I hope you understand what the hell we're, we're talking about here. So I'll go off NCAA guidelines is what I learned in school. But NCAA, natural, NSCA, excuse me, NCAA. 
NSCA, National Strength Coat and Conditioning Association, um, which is a very reputable uh, association. Let's just say that. Recommend point, uh, zero not, point 0.9 to 1.3 grams per kilogram of body weight. Now, that's, I mean, uh, I think that's outdated and I think that's low. But just to give you guys an idea, you don't need this massive amount of protein. Um, you, and like because it does become a chore and it does become to burden some on your body and your wallet uh, if you try to hit this massive number of protein all the time. But that's just a little thing there. I wouldn't really go off that. What I would say is honestly what most people, most coaches would say is one gram of protein per pound of body weight. But this is only if you're lean, right? Think about it. I weigh 220. I'm fairly lean. I'm under 10% body fat. Probably not by, I'm probably around 10% right now, actually. But that's lean enough. If, so I'm like shooting about, hit about 200, like I'm trying to gain a little bit of weight. So I'm shooting, it's trying to hit about 230 grams protein a day, which is uh, not that, not that much. But if, let's say I gained 40 pounds of fat. All of a sudden I weigh 260. Do I need 260 grams of protein? No. That extra fat does not require protein. So what you need to do is if you're overweight, which most people are, let's be honest, and you're trying to lose weight and gain muscle, is you need to find out what your body fat percentage is and your lean muscle mass and use that number as your protein goal, right? As whatever your goal lean muscle mass is, if that makes sense. But you need to know that number. There's just several numbers that you should be aware of at all times, if possible, which is your weight, your body fat, and from there you can find out, you can use the mathematics easily to find out your muscle mass. And from there you just make little changes. Now here's the thing, uh, to end the video. So one gram, of, one gram per pound of body weight, but the types of protein you eat does matter because there are essential amino acids. What does that mean? We talked about amino acids before, the lowest broken down form of the protein. Well, if it's essential, that means your body doesn't make it because your body is making, synthesizing a lot of these proteins endogenously, meaning inside the body. Bacteria in your gut, all types of different things, different vitamins and minerals. But there's nine essential amino acids and what the names are irrelevant here. You can look that up if you want. But uh, there's certain foods that are that contain all of these amino acids. One of them is meat. I believe eggs does too, but I know meat does. Um, which is a lot, one reason that most like bodybuilders, whatnot, like depend on chicken and you know chicken and beef and steak and things like that instead of broccoli or soybean. Which I think soybean actually has all the essential amino acids too, but. It's important to know that like if you just have like like almonds, even though it has protein, I'm talking about food labels here now, right? It says it has protein on it. It doesn't tell you if it's an essential if it has all the essentials. It's just a very vague term. It's got protein in it. So you want to get combinations. You, there's different combinations of food types that you can get to get your essential amino acids. But I'm not going to bog people down with this. The biggest thing I'll say is if you can and you're not against it for whatever reason, you can't go wrong with organic meat, definitely organic meat, eggs, things like that. Like literally that's it. Chicken, eggs, steak, ground beef, turkey, lamb, bison, you know, whatever. And then from there you can get different little sources, yogurt. You can mix in, if you mix in like granola with yogurt, I believe that's one of those combinations that gives you all the amino acids. But the end goal is, that's why it's very hard to be vegan and do this stuff. I'm just being honest. There is a way, there's obviously ways to do it, but you're, it, it becomes infinitely more complicated. But I hope that kind of answers people's questions. <laughs> See, this is why I call it tactical nutrition, because I don't want to just come out here like a meathead and be like, well, you need to eat this much protein, blah, 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 blah. I think it's, under, I think it's uh, important that people understand what they're, why they're doing what they're doing, at least the basics. You don't have to know everything, but you should know 
a little bit so you can make intuitive decisions and learn so that you can adapt yourself and create your own solutions in the future. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.